was able to make it tonight. Um, and I think that's a logical place to start. Uh, I think I know everybody around the table, but I'm pretty sure not everybody knows each other. So could we just start with um, John on the end, just a quick. My name is John Allen. And just a little bit about. How old am I? <laughs> <laughs> a former select board member. I'm a former select board member. Um, I've been on the finance committee, a uh, bunch of things around town, and I've always been interested in the um, town administrator management end of the town um, for 40 years. So uh, uh, I may, I'll be able to offer some background. Okay. Right. Uh, Mary Carney, I am not a former select board member. Um, I'm on the historical commission, but I've I've been away for many years and just came back to the area a few years ago. So get you back in the Hadley swing. Yeah. I'm John Celestro. Um, I uh, have previously served a long time ago as chair of the elementary school building committee, which was quite an experience. <laughs> <laughs> until, until our entire committee was booted off by a group of disgruntled select board members. <laughs> so it's a good experience. Yeah. Uh, I've also served on a um, personnel handbook uh, committee uh, a few years ago and served on the historical commission for a couple of years. I'm Bill DeWire. I'm a long time, but not the longest time, member of the planning board, uh, which is an, a separately elected board here in Hadley. And in my day job, I'm a lawyer here in Hadley. Um, Molly Keegan, currently chair of the Hadley Select Board and previously served on Finance Committee and School Committee. I'm Jennifer Sanders James. I work for Molly and the rest of the Select Board, and I'm just here. I'm going to take your minutes tonight since y'all haven't even elected yet for clerk, and then I'm going to help with any logistics. Thanks, Jen. I'm Mike Mason. I'm the Chief of Police and also the Interim Town Administrator. And just here to make sure that all the right connections are made and you get everything you need to get the job done. Hi, I'm Sally Lenowski, and uh, this is my first foray into um, local politics. I'm um, excited to be here. Um, I work at UMass Amherst. I'm a lecturer in health promotion and policy, where we focus a lot on government and policy and structure and that sort of thing. So I was pretty interested in joining at this time. Um, and previously, I was in the Dean of Students Office, where I worked extensively on town gun relations. So um, have a lot of good connections in the area, and just looking forward to contributing. I'm Pat Boyd with the Collins Center. Um, I've been with Collins Center about three years, and I work on our um, charter and organizational team as well as on our HR team. Um, in my past life, I've been a um, labor and employment lawyer and managing editor of legal publications for cities and towns. Also been a lot involved in my own local boards and um, we're excited to be here and have you tonight. Thanks, Pat. I'm Mel Kleckner and I'm also with the Collins Center. I've been there for about two years and uh, I was a uh, town manager, town administrator for my whole career, all in Massachusetts, over 40 years. So. Um, um, definitely uh, wanted to join the organization structure because that's where my interest lies. Um, the town administrator, how the, how the executive function works, uh, it's really important to me how the town works. So we're really happy to be here. Pat and I have worked together on a number of projects for other communities. So uh, we have a pretty good system where we think we can cover all the things you need and we'll actually prepare a, uh, you know, a syllabus or a work plan at some point when we uh, we talk through some of the, the issues and dates and, and so on. So thank you very much. Thanks, Phil. Um, so the first order of business is really organizational. And the uh, goal tonight would be to elect a chair and a clerk. Uh, it is highly recommended that select board members not participate in that. So you know, again, David Phil's not here tonight, but uh, he and I would be the select board members. Um, and if nothing else, uh, when you think about it, uh, for a lot of people, there would be the appearance that the select board is steering this committee. So um, with that in mind, we'd like to step back 
um, and we're hoping that uh, somebody might be willing to step up and run the meetings um, with, with help. Um, and I'm happy to talk about the open meeting law next, too. Um, but just I'm wondering if anybody would be interested in being chair or clerk. Um, the role of the clerk is basically to run the meetings when the chair is unavailable, um, and also to take minutes when there isn't somebody here taking minutes for us. <laughs> Well, I'm so the were you elect choice because she's not here? I'm the alternate, so I'm not right. going I mean, to yeah. and volunteer you're also for either. a sitting elected official, too. You know, um, I mean, I would happily nominate Joyce to be the chair because she's not here. She certainly knows <laughs> how to run a meeting. Um, I'll second it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll, no I'll nominate Joyce uh, contingent upon her uh, willingness to serve. As chair, John, are you seconding that? I did. Okay. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, but we really need a backup. So, to Joyce. You know, John, Mary, Sally. <laughs> I can be clerk. <laughs> Okay, okay. Yeah. thanks, Mary. All right, so there make are a motion. stringent deadlines for typing up minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a motion to appoint uh, Mary Carney, uh, clerk. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 No. Aye. <laughs> okay, Mary, just like in Star Trek, the con is now yours. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay, so I think the next. Um, the next item is the open meeting law guy. Oh, so you don't have yeah, that, would have help. that would help. Okay. Um, so, and again, just for more educational purposes, to make sure everybody understands that uh, because this is an appointed committee of the select board, we are subject to open meeting law requirements, okay? Which means that, um, and, and we will make sure that everybody here has the open meeting law guide. Um, fairly straightforward. Basically, it says that um, you know the public has a right to know um, what we're doing in these meetings. That's you know why it's being uh, taped this evening. Um, anybody in the public has a right to attend the meeting if they want to sit. Um, we we don't have to um, allow them to participate per se, but they they deserve the right to to come and join us. Uh, and it's at the discretion of the chair really. Um, if we want to entertain any any um, participation, um, and the other thing is, you know, we need to keep minutes. Um, so those minutes uh, need to be voted upon. Um, best practice, if we can do it, is to vote at the very next meeting because it's fresh on our minds. Sometimes we get a little bit backed up, but you know that's a good idea. Uh, but probably the most important thing about the open meeting law, everybody should be aware of, if you haven't participated on a on a public body before is that um, you know deliberations outside of the meeting are, are more than they're more than discouraged right so um, if a quorum exists so in our case it's going to be five people so three three committee members constituting a quorum cannot have communications about the content of our discussions. It's, it would be deemed to be deliberating. Um, you know, it's a small town. We're all going to find ourselves at, at common places, whether it's, you know, the senior center events or whatever. But we can't discuss and go back and forth on, on uh, the content of what we should be discussing in an open meeting. I think those are probably the key points. Pat, do you want to? Just, just that that same uh, principle extends to uh, electronic media. So if it's email, mm -hmm. group email, uh, social media, chat, those are uh, not something you should be uh, participating in. And, and also just to, as a general rule, you should, if you receive information from the chair, you shouldn't reply all. Um, you can reply back to the chair who can um, distribute information. Mm -hmm. 
it might be noted that uh, it's, uh, there's a wonderful guide for the open meeting law. That you could just Google it if anyone's interested in reading. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll send around. Uh, the town has a handbook for committees, and so we will make sure that that gets. And, oh, it's on the website? Okay. Yes, that page. Okay. All right. So if you go to the Town of Hadley website, go to the select board, click into that, and then you will find the uh, committee handbook. So I would just encourage everybody to read that. And with that, I'm going to pass my agenda over to the chair. <laughs> I mean, I have a meeting. I have the minutes for this meeting. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> all right. Well, I have little to no idea what I'm doing, so <laughs> it looks like you guys <laughs> call and send your proposal and update. Sure, sure. We have a little presentation we'll make, but just generally speaking, we're, uh, you know, we're your consultant and we work for you, and we are not going to tell you what to do. Um, but we don't do that to any of our clients because um, the municipality, your, your town, you, you know, you live here, you're invested in there, and uh, but we're going to try to help you, um, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. Let me, let me get the presentation started. Right. Hopefully they can do that again. I don't know what happened. <clears throat> okay, so um, we are uh, affiliated with uh, UMass Boston, um, and um, what we're going to do today is um, talk about a few things. We're going to talk about uh, us a little bit about what a charter is and how it's adopted, uh, what a typical committee work plan is, um, talk a little bit about the form of government and trends, um, some of the alternatives to charters, and then what we really want to do is uh, hear from you too, you know, hear from you all. It will help us a lot, and maybe it's not going to happen in the first meeting, but we want to understand what are the issues going on in Hadley, and so we can, we can help. Um, so our background, um, we're a relatively new entity uh, created in 2008 by the Commonwealth. We're part of, we have a, a special law creating the Common Center and provide technical assistance to municipalities, uh, mostly municipalities, but also uh, some state agencies and other organizations. So we think of ourselves as a management consultant, but with a public basis and a public uh, perspective. Uh, we've worked in a lot of places. Uh, Pat uh, mentioned, I think, just a little while ago, she's worked here before, another project. So we've worked in most of the uh, city and towns in Massachusetts. And we have a lot of uh, areas of focus, but uh, for, for us, Pat and I, we work for the Charter and Organizational Structure Team in, in the capacity of this, this project. Um, so uh, let me uh, turn it over to Pat and talk a little bit about uh, charters. Great, thank you. Um, so uh, as we indicate here, a charter is really the constitution of a city or town. Um, many towns are operate like yours are operating under a patchwork of special acts, bylaws, rules that have existed over time and are amended and added to and changed. Um, a charter is a document that pulls them all together into one place. So there is transparency for your town and so you can understand how it works in one easy document instead of having to do the research and finding out you know, what special act established your town and what has happened since then and what are all the amendments. So um, some towns have um, what we call a town manager act or a town administrator special act um, that's not a full charter. Um, they may call them charters. Um, so, you know, a classic charter may include a variety of things, not only your structure of government, but also your finance process and any citizen participation um, measures that you may have and um, a little bit about your elections. Um, some cities and towns are limited to just a focus on t a town manager or a town administrator act. Um, so charters are, must comply with state law. So they're subordinate to state law, 
Um, and the bylaws, any bylaws, are subordinate to the charter. So if the charter is established, the bylaws are going to need to be changed to conform with the original charter. Um, and then the I'm going to talk a little bit about the processes for adopting the charter. Um, this, what we are talking about here, um, there are really two processes. Um, one involves kind of a citizen-led initiative where citizens will put a petition together, try to pull together a charter commission, an elected ch charter commission, um, and that route is a separate um, kind of a grassroots-led effort. Um, what we're talking about today is a special act charter process, and that is often um, convened by a town study committee or a town charter review committee is convened, um, sometimes appointed by the select board, uh, and what happens is there's a thorough process of looking at the structure and operation of the town all together. Um, and then that structure is put together in, to a final report and recommendations. And if the recommendations include creating a charter or creating a special act or creating some legislative change, um, the committee works on a draft of that. Uh, then um, the select board may approve some or all of the recommendations and send it forward to town meeting for, for a full vote from town meeting. Um, if town meeting approves it, the proposed charter or special act is submitted to the select, is then submitted by the select board to the legislature for its approval. Um, the legislature will be the arbiter of does this comply with state law? If there are areas that aren't complying with state law, is that something we approve and want it to go forward? Um, but ultimately, any work that's done by a charter or a town governance committee um, will be voted. Um, voted on in the end after the legislative process for final approval or disapproval. Um, what this next slide talks a little bit about what our work plan is going to be. Um, we will put something together for you based on, you know, you may want to have additional discussions tonight about how often you want to meet, what nights you want to meet. Um, most frequently, it's a twice a month that, that committees meet. Um, you can choose the date and times that work best for you, um, and we will be there. Um, so first, the first task will be to really thoroughly research your current structure and operations. Take a look at it, um, and take a look at what you can do as a town. Um, given the size of Hadley, um, we're not looking at changing the form of government because you need to have at least 6,000 residents to do that. But there are structural issues that we're going to look at. Look at your structure and see how it compares to the options that are available to you. Uh, we, one of your charges will also be to create a public process to, to get inputs from other residents. So at some point along this process, in addition to having people show up at your meetings, um, you will want to have some sort of public input process, perhaps a few of them along the way, to solicit input. It's probably a good idea to have a, an email address for your committee so that, so that emails and questions from the public and input from the public will be filtered to the chair so that you can discuss it at your, at your meetings. We're also available to, part of the process will be researching aspects of government in other Massachusetts cities and towns. So um, if you're interested, we'll, we'll talk to you about the issues that are unique to Hadley. And if you're interested in making a change or wondering what other cities and towns do, we'll bring you that research so that you can understand. It may not work for Hadley, um, but it's always a good idea to see what other towns are doing and whether it's working. Ultimately, at the end of this process, uh, you'll be preparing a report um, that documents your findings and makes recommendations to the select board and town meeting. Uh, this may include draft, charter, or special act language if you've decided to make any changes to the current language. Um, and we will help you with that. You, you don't have to draft a charter by yourselves. We will help you through that process. The process generally takes 12 to 18 months. Um, and I know um, 
Now, are you going to be talking about the charging goal? Well, you that. Okay. That was right. last slide. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that we're first going to start talking about, um, and we can, we can go through this a little bit more, is that your original charge talks about being ready for the May 2025 town meeting. Um, that's not necessarily a feasible goal. Um, this, the idea of this committee has been brewing probably for, what, six months to a year. So we're already, we're just starting now. So um, it is likely you'll have to, we'll have to be in communication with the select board and others. Um, what is our end date? Um, is it out a year or 18 months? Will it be a regular town meeting? Will it be a special town meeting? Um, and then we can work backwards from there. Um, but your charge, which was given to you by the select board, includes a few things. One, produces special legislative act for the town that provides all residents with a local government that is transparent, effective, efficient, and responsive, both for the present day and for future generations. Whether that's a charter or a special act, um, your charge is to um, take a look at the government structure, see if you want to make any changes, and we'll put together a special act to reflect those changes. Um, you will follow an open, inclusive, and thorough process that reviews all facets of government, considers all opinions, respects all points of view, researches comparable communities for alternatives, and obtains as much information as possible. So um, we're going to work with you and give you the information that you need to make the decisions that you have. Um, you will also be writing a report to accompany the Special Legislative Act that outlines the proposed act, specific changes, etc. Um, you know, the length and sophistication of the report is really going to depend on um, where you're going with the special act in the charter. Um, I would look at it more as an outline of what's in the charter, what's changing, what's staying the same. And um, the last, as we talked about, strive to complete work in the designated time period. Um, we will need to find out what you're aiming for and then work backwards from there. Um, have you ever seen a, a charter that you worked on fail at the town meeting? Absolutely. And it's heartbreaking and it has just happened to us. It does fail. And, um, you know, we're always talking about lessons learned from these things. Um, often, I would say one of the lessons learned is you need to get as much public input as possible as early as possible um, because. Nobody's here from the public right now, um, and nobody might be here for the next year at your meetings. Um, and then when it gets to town meeting, that may be the first time people are understanding it. So the more you can engage the public along the way, um, the more you can bring people in to talk about the issues they're facing, um, the better shot you're going to have at, at this getting through to town meeting. Um, and have all of your hard work that goes to town meeting actually succeed. Thanks. We have just a few more slides we'll, we'll get through. Uh, as, as Pat mentioned, um, form of government will be an easy one uh, for, for us because of your population size. But just to give you some perspective, there's really two forms of government in Massachusetts. There's a town form, which has a town meeting and select board, and then there's a council form which has a representative council instead of a town meeting and has either a town manager or a mayor as the chief executive. So the mayor council, that's a Northampton council manager, uh, Amherst adopted that recently. Um, representative town meeting, you're not uh, uh, yet at the, at the population that will allow that. So we know you're gonna be in the open town meeting and you're gonna retain a select board. So uh, that is helpful because uh, many of the places where we go, uh, the community is interested in exploring other options. Uh, and that's fine, but it, it, uh, it frankly, um, you know, one of the communities that did fail to pass their charter, it was because it was a different form of government, it was a change. Here, at least, I think we're, we're uh, dealing with at least, uh, you know, the, the basic form of government you currently operate in. And let's talk about the operation of, of having this government. So you have uh, uh, an open town meeting, and their legal basis is what Pat mentioned. It's, a, it's really um, hundreds, literally hundreds of years of state law, special state laws, 
special acts that the, that the town of Padley might pass, bylaws, and quite honestly, a lot of uh, practices and, and unwritten practices and, and things. And so um, a lot of times uh, that's what is prompting the charter. It's, well, how do we really work? And, and you know, why, why, do, why do we do it that way? It's not written down anywhere, or it's written down in 100 different places over, over 300 years. So a charter uh, tends to, to bring that together. And so you do not have a charter. Your legal base is just this uh, consolidated uh, group of laws and bylaws. Um, your executive, um, you have the five-member uh, select board. They are the chief executive body, and they appoint uh, a full-time administrator. Now, I refer to it as a week, and I don't mean that in, in any pejorative way to Mike or to Carolyn before him or anybody. It's just the fact is, uh, that when the a select board does not share a lot of power with the town administrator, the select board maintains a lot of the power and authority. And there's a bylaw for the town administrator, but it's largely uh, administrative in nature. And so that's why we call it weak, and we don't mean that in any, any negative way. Uh, I was a weak town administrator for many of the communities I worked with. Um, you have generally, and most towns like you, have a lot of separately elected boards. We count 11. Uh, I mean, that may include the town clerk and the town moderator, but um, there's a, a lot of separately elected boards. Uh, and that will, we think, will be a source of discussion for you all. Uh, is there any boards that, you know, are there, how are you doing with these boards? Are you, are you getting candidates for office? Are they qualified candidates for some technical jobs that have? So we have a way of working through those with you, uh, but we'll, we'll talk about elected boards. And then your budget process, uh, the town administrator prepares the budget. Um, the, finance, the, the finance committee really are, is the one who's in charge of the budget. And, uh, one of the things you'll, you'll hear from us is budget and finance are a big part of, of, of charters these days. That's a big part of a town government is your budget, passing your budget or your capital budget, very important. And so where it used to be left to the bylaws, we are always uh, usually having a section in our charters about budgets um, these days and financial. This is, um, we took out of your budget uh, the document back in FY 2017. And so I think you can see that it's a it, you know, very flat organization. Um, it's not unusual. This is the way many small open town meeting towns are organized over the years. And uh, we want you to understand how this works. This may not be the best way to communicate that. So we're going to have to figure a way to explain you know, where, where the decisions are made, who, who, you know, and how they're shared, and, and so on. Mel, can I just? Uh... Certainly. So one change since 2017, yes. um, the treasurer and collector are now appointed. Okay, yeah. uh, thank you, because we were wondering about yeah. that. And the next slide is talking about this. Uh, there was a report that was done back in 2017 mm -hmm. by the, the State Department of Revenue. It's a very good report, we will share it with you. And by the way, we think it would be good not only to have your own email address, but have a place on your website where you can deposit stuff, you know, it, uh, this this presentation tonight, this report, other things, because we really want the people to say, we didn't know about this, uh, we don't want them to say that, we want them to say that. So, uh, it, one of the uh, one of the recommendations was this, um, was uh, to uh, convert, combine and convert the elected treasurer and collector positions to appointed. And so, that's now one position, Mom? Well, we, we did to, not do the combination, okay. but both of those are, positions are appointed. Okay, so you know, we're, we're gonna talk about this report. Well, the first recommendation was to give the town administrator more authority, and in this case, it was appointing authority, uh, maybe department heads, maybe others. I, you know, I'm not sure, we'll, we'll have to get into that. Um, and then HR and information technology seem to be from uh, back in 2017 issues. We'll have to look at that again. And then um, sort of on the theme of the treasury collector, you know, creating a financial management team that are working together in a coordinated way. Um, let's get through this. So uh, here's some trends that we see uh, when we're doing charter work these days. Um, generally speaking, there is some consolidation in the boards in, in order to get that flat organization to try to make it a little bit more hierarchical, um, captain of the ship sort of uh, uh, analogy that, that you were talking about. Um, so that's some area that a lot of charter committees are working on. I already mentioned the emphasis on the budget process 
and the capital plan, which is a part of that. Um, technology, um, a lot of times you'll find uh, charters talking about, you know, posting uh, on the bulletin board down at the, uh, you know, square. And, you know, these days there's much different ways of, of uh, communicating, engaging with the public and meeting uh, public participation guidelines. So, uh, you know, we'll deal with that. Uh, this one's very important. Standard ICE procedures for the conduct and operation of local government and all these boards and committees that you have. Um, there are ways to keep it, but coordinate it and make it a little bit better. Um, so we're going to talk about that, and the charter is a great place for that. Uh, we are all now always removing gender references. Do you refer to your select board as a select board or board selectmen still? Select that board. was changed a little bit. Yeah. yeah. yeah so we'll, we'll, you know, any document that we put together will be similarly uh, you know, gender neutral. And then um, something we're always doing now uh, for everybody is creating a, a procedure for looking back every five or ten years, looking to see, um, you know, is this still relevant? That way you don't get so far behind like some communities we work with, you know, they haven't done a charter or have never done a charter or have not done a, a review for, you know, dozens of years, and that's not good. Now, Pat mentioned there are other ways other than a charter. A charter actually is a special act. It's just a very comprehensive special act. There are limited special acts that we find towns, for whatever reason, might want to do before doing a charter. Um, Typically, uh, maybe they want to create a town administrator. Now, you have a town administrator that's including your bylaws, but if you want to include your charter, you could create or, or have a mini charter. You could create just that, uh, that charter. Um, and then bylaws, um, you know, uh, bylaw, uh, that's where a lot of your, in you know, Hadley, a lot of your, your stuff is. And, um, you know, we want to make sure it's, it's relevant and um, it re reflects best practices. So, um, you know, really what we want to do at this point, um, you know, it's up to you guys how you want to run the rest of your meeting. First of all, we're happy to take any questions. You know, that's a lot of information. Um, you're not familiar, necessarily familiar with all this stuff, so we're happy to take any questions that you have. Um, Mike asked a good one before about, you know, what, hap you know, what happens if these things lose or, you know. Uh, but, and then also, we would love to hear from you if there are issues going on uh, in Hadley or have been going on that you think we should be aware of. That's really important for, for us to hear. Um, and then, um, you know, there's a lot of things that come up in charters. So, for example, uh, there might be um, an issue around zoning, which I'm sure land use is very important here. Um, but we don't, pass, the charter doesn't include chart zoning language, or it's, it's not that kind of a, a document. But if that's an issue for you, uh, we would probably want to document that and report at least and figure out how the town might deal with it down, down the road. Uh, or if it's a zoning issue, maybe it means you have to strengthen the planning board or change some of the procedures organizationally and we'll work with you on that. So really that's, uh, that's, that's it. Um, I think we, we're covering all that stuff, so why don't we just uh, turn it back to you guys and, and uh, go ahead. I have a question. Um, yeah. Is there widespread interest among towns in Massachusetts to re-examine their charter structure of government? The answer is yes. Mm -hmm. I find that when they get to it and they realize, you know, that there's changes to be or changes to be made in best practices, that becomes hard. It's hard to a adopt a charter these days. I find in the way you know our public governance is being handled, it's just it's very hard, and uh, I think. We, we want to talk more about that. I think that's some of the lessons we learn. As we learn charters that didn't pass, we want to try to explain that to you and why that didn't happen. Um, anyway, that's a was this, long way of getting this interest in charter examination revision, was it spurred on by the legislature, by the governor? Yeah. Uh, well, there is currently a, uh, a grant program that is assisting cities and towns to look at their charters, so sometimes that is enough to spur that. But usually, it really is just about they want to get more organization and more um, clarity in terms of how their government works. Mm -hmm. I would um, add transparency has become a really big concern. They want people to understand how the government works. And it's very difficult to do so if you need to look up all of the special acts and what was accepted and not accepted and what the bylaws are. So a big issue is transparency and putting it in one place. 
I would say it's probably the most uh, important thing why these communities are looking. They're looking for, to organize themselves better, trans communicate better transparency. But there are communities that are having problems. So they may have a controversy. Maybe there was some corruption in their organization. Maybe their town meeting blew up and they couldn't get anything voted. Or there's a committee, uh, an elected committee that's fighting and, and stopping the select board from doing anything they want to do. And so sometimes those are things. Um, and they are spurring the need to look and change. I, you know, we don't know here. I, we're sensing it's the former. You know, you just want to sort of get organized. There is some interest, I think, in looking at the town administrator position, as we understand, and you would do that anyway. But that's um, it's really up to you guys why you're looking at it. But yeah, there's a lot of interest. We have a lot of communities out there looking to organize themselves better. And my other question would be from Molly and the select board. <laughs> Um, my, my general strategy in life is if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. But apparently the select board felt that something was broken and needed to be fixed. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I think when we start looking at the, the org chart um, that Mel put up there, what we've found is that um, sometimes things should move a little bit more quickly. It would be in the best interest of the town that things could move more quickly. And with the sort of distributed decision making that we have, um, sometimes you know the wheels grind very slowly in, or in order to get to an end result. Um, so that's one thing specifically what comes to mind is you know some of the, the hiring. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's difficult to just get an empty seat filled in a timely manner. Um, so that's one area. The other thing is that, um, and I think you know, Mike just ran across a really good example. Um, we have one of the 11, I was counting nine in my head, I gotta go back and see the other two. Uh, maybe housing authority. Oh, housing, yeah, there. I missed that one. Um, but uh, the Board of Assessors, right? So the Board of Assessors are elected. The as assistant <coughs> assessor, Dan Zadonik, reports to them, they, they direct his work. Um, but he's an employee at Town Hall who's part of the financial management team, you know, he has human resource needs, all of that. And the town administrator really doesn't have any authority to tell the town, you know, to, to help guide the work of the assessor. Mm -hmm. Now, does it happen from a practical standpoint? Maybe, but from an organizational structure, you could run into a situation where the select board's needs or what they thought was in the best interest wasn't being met and they would have no authority to actually deal with that. I'm not picking on Dan Zadonik by any means, but it's just an example from, a, from an organizational structure standpoint. So the, one of the questions we have is should we be looking at all of those disparate boards and committees um, to see if there's a, maybe a better better way to run things in a more consistent and cohesive way. Is that a fair way to put that issue? Yeah, that's okay. very good. So I have a question. I, I agree to accept an alternate posting on this because of an offhand comment in your letter saying you shouldn't fill it up with elected board members. I am an elected board member. You also have two select board members on this. Mm -hmm. So what, what's the goal? What are you trying to achieve with that? Literally, it was a parenthetical clause almost. It, it was a trend. It was not, it was, it's, it's something that's happening. It's not something that we're bringing to this table and said, we really think you have an organization that doesn't work, or we don't know. We are trying to facilitate you. Uh, that particular thing was just the trend, what we're seeing. When we go into communities, that's one of the issues that um, we tend to, uh, to uh, address. That, that elected like board we, members want to be on this committee? No, no, no. I think he's referring to the appointment oh, of oh, oh, you know, when you the went, charge. Well, you know, uh, ideally, we like to have people who are objective and are, don't have a vested interest necessarily, but we're very aware of you're a small town and uh, the same people probably get together and, and, and uh, you know, active from one committee to other issues. So it's not an issue. The only issue, uh, I think, uh, uh, Bill, was that uh, we didn't want somebody who was here really to, to look at a very narrow focus of, we want to keep the, 
planning board elected, for example, no matter what. And, uh, um, or, you know, somebody on another board who's had a, a beef or some issue with, with the town and they want to, you know, promote that. But other than that, we're, we're very, your committee's great. We're, we have no issues with your committee. It is. We just, we just want to make sure we're including a broad spectrum of the community. And, um, you know, and, and as Mel said, in a, in a town of your size, people wear a lot of different hats. And um, so it's, it's wonderful to have that ex some of that experience on the board because then when we're talking about an issue, um, someone can say, oh, I work with this, I do this all the time. This is how we do it. So it's great to have some experience, but also great to have members of the public who maybe are less familiar with government so that their insights are brought in as well. Or they just ask a simple question, why? Why do you do it that way, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I'd like to know, do you, as a select board member, uh, do you sense that there's uh, this questioning in this town? That there's questioning of the... The, the, pe the people are, are um, I think it's John's questions too, what, 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 um, what caused this to, to come up? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, are there people complaining or talking to you about that? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think um, I would say more from um, an employee standpoint right. that the employees themselves have probably been the louder voices in terms of expressing frustration about how seemingly convoluted, sometimes simple things can be. Right, you I've know, heard the same thing from Town Hall. It's and it, as expressed to me, and what I heard was, it takes so long to get a decision made when you're talk when everything has to go through the select board. Mm -hmm. And I think, from a, I'll, I'll call it a, a residence perspective, or or also business owners too. I mean, you know, wh whoever the the non-municipal employee elected officials, stakeholders are, um, th there have definitely been a lot of um, confusion. I mean, especially either residents who've, who've moved in from other communities or business owners who do business across multiple municipalities. Sometimes the way things happen in Hadley can be called to question just from like, really? Because over here, I don't, I don't have to go to three different boards to get that done. We can just do it this way. So mm -hmm. I would not say that those are loud voices. Those are um, sporadic. But the more, you know, the, the longer but, I'm involved in what I'm doing, the more you hear that. But it's clear something could be tuned up in the process. Perhaps. Yep. My other question is, there's currently a search for a new town administrator. Mm -hmm. To what extent will the existence of this committee and efforts to examine the structure of government either deter de prevent people from applying or encourage people to apply. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, in my, in, in, again, I'm just one, yeah. one vote right. on the select yeah. board. Um, first and foremost, we're all in agreement. We need to be completely transparent to use password. I mean, so anybody that applies for that position is, will be made aware of the fact that this committee is meeting and that it exists. Mm -hmm. um, Which could change the nature of their, their job. It could, and, and to that end, I think it's important that as we're interviewing candidates, um, you know, we are hiring in the current governmental structure, but I, I don't necessarily think that the skill sets of a town, uh, a strong town administrator and a, a weak to use mills are mutually exclusive. Mm -hmm. I think there are some people who might only have skill sets for one. Um, so in my own mind, I think we need to be, uh, you know, looking at it with that lens. If we do hire somebody, depending on the outcome of this process, you know, we don't want to do a bait and switch and pull the rug out from under somebody, right, that, that we just hired. So you'd want to know that they could potentially fill, fill that bill. But Again, sure, not presuming yeah. an outcome of the committee. Your goal would be to fill that time in position by the end of this year or um, by spring or we're, tomorrow? 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're suspecting it's going to take longer than that. Mm -hmm. um, I think yeah. we talked to three different search firms. You know, one of them felt a little bit more confident that they could be relatively aggressive. They were talking about a 13-week timeline. Mm -hmm. um, that caused me to go. <laughs> um, so, I mean, we're imagining the earliest would be Q1 mm -hmm. 2025. I think when you look at the time frame of what it usually takes a committee like this to to make their decision and put something forward, at minimum, the person that you bring on, if there were to be a significant change in their job description, there would be time to kind of work those problems through and make sure that they had the corresponding training that was required to be able to handle the job. Mm -hmm. And that's assuming, again, that anything at all changes. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm pretty sure that you would not, it would impact things too much here. You're not changing your form of government because, you know, you, you have to have an open town meeting. And, um, you know, some of the things that we know, the, the town minister, you already have a bylaw. They're already doing a lot of these things. Um, I think it's more tweaking and, and strengthening as opposed to changing it wholesale. So I don't think you would find people uh, saying, I don't want to touch Hadley because I don't know where they're going. I don't know what this committee is going to do, and that's it's not really it's not really a huge leap, I don't think, uh, from here where you're, where you're going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, but but would it not be uh, useful or prudent to be able to, when the board goes out for a new administrator, to be able to say uh, you will have uh, hiring authority of the, of the staff or not. Yeah, would it would be would that would be helpful, but it doesn't sound like you're gonna that's gonna meet the time frame here. Well, I can tell you, John, one of the things that um, we put in our we call our RFQ for the the three or four companies that we're looking at to do this is a specific bullet point to let them know that any applicants should be aware that this committee has been formed and is looking at this possibility. So at minimum, anybody that applies would be aware that something might change. Whether or not we can tell them this is the change and this is what's going to happen it is yet to be seen. But um, one of the specific charges is that whoever, whatever company we hire, any, any heads they hunt, so to speak, uh, will be, be aware that that the formal government committee is currently analyzing whether or not the job description will change slightly. So it'll be out there. And could I ask a question about um, in engagement too? And, and you know, you, you make a very good point again that, that the more the merrier, the earlier, the better, right? Um, I. I'm imagining that we're going to want to first assess, you know, where are we, right? Take an inventory of what's working well, what may not be working that well. Um, the people, I think, you know, certainly an initial core group of, of, you know, the department heads in particular, we have some pretty long time department heads. I mean, are you imagining that we would interview them, they would do a survey or how do you, see that happening? Um, well, I would say um, as you mentioned, engagement is two ways. One is public engagement and one might be internal engagement. Mm -hmm. um, so initially, um, once we talk about what, your, what the issues are that, that you're hearing about that you want to bring forward, um, it probably would be a good idea to bring some of these department heads and to talk to everybody um, so you can understand how they do that. Uh, how they do things and what changes they're interested in moving forward. Um, but, you know, first we probably want to identify what some of those issues are and some of those department issues are. And it may be that you have, you know, one night where you bring in several people and just mm -hmm. give them an opportunity to tell you about their department, about their strengths and weaknesses, and what interests they have in making a change. Mm -hmm. So, well, one of the things we found is. Uh, and another community made a decision to convert an elected board to an appointed board, but they never talked to that board. 
you know, and so, <laughs> Oops. Um, yeah. so, and so you know, those things have a way of kind of coming back and yeah. right away. So <laughs> there, there's some just, uh, uh, like Pat said, you know, sometimes it's just listening and hearing from them, and at least they can't say, they never even talk to us about, right. about what we do, and so uh, I agree. Uh, there's, a, there's a big learning curve. Everybody has to get up onto the same level of, of understanding of how, mm -hmm. the, how the town works. Mm -hmm. and, and I would say, and nothing against that other committee, they, they had many more issues to look at, form of government, et cetera, to meet their time frame. They could not have every board in and talk about them. You have um, a bit of a luxury in that we're not looking at a form of government change, so there can be a lot more of a deep dive into um, some of your boards and committees and how they work and understanding them. Um, that will only be part of the process, you know, should some of these be appointed instead of elected, um, the decision might be, no, leave them as it is. But it's something to talk about, and you have a little bit more luxury of time in that you're not going to be spending several months deciding what form of government you have. Mm -hmm. um, we get to start right out and take a look at some of the more internal structures. Mm -hmm. uh, to do this properly, would this committee interview for example, employees and ask them um, for their ideas on how the town could, how we could run the town more efficiently, or should we leave that up to the Board of Selectmen, or? Uh... You know, that would be unusual. That's not usually something that's done in this type of study. Um, this is, the Charter and Special Act is a really high level look at these departments. Um, there are, there are other studies that are done which may look at a particular department and look for that kind of individual employee input. I think we have to rely a little bit on the boards and department heads to represent you know, what people are feeling in those departments. Um, probably would not get to that granular level, mostly because that kind of information isn't always in a charter. The charter is really the broad um, skeleton of how the government functions. Um, and it's not going to get down to that granular level. We might, um, do, however, think about ways to solicit opinions from everybody in the community, whether they're businesses or people who live here, or people who work in the town of government, and so on. Um, we, we think that's good. Uh, yeah, but, but you need something, I think, first to, to, to give them. You, know, you, you might want to identify some you know, three questions, you know, very broad mm -hmm. questions, and then, and then have some, some we're, we're concerned that uh, after our last uh, experience, that because nobody shows up at these meetings and they and and, and the, some of the targeted public um, uh, engagement processes, we've got to find a different you know got to find other ways to make sure you know what the community is thinking. Um, it's hard. That, that's probably the hardest thing. And well, you know you know this is you know you can never really get enough information from the public there. You know, they just don't want to attend the meetings, and, you know, until they have to. And then when, uh, as Pat said, you know, all of a sudden the charter comes out, and people say, well, what? My, my, my job is, you know, going to be under another jurisdiction, and that's the problem. Mm -hmm. get that late. Having lived in Hadley for 38 years, although a lot of people call me a newcomer, <laughs> or a transient. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you too. <Yeah. laughs> you too. Um, the bottom line for a lot of voters at town meeting is, what's it going to cost? Will mm -hmm. it make the town more financially efficient? Uh, is this something that, a question that could be answered or not? Depends. It's hard. You know, government is hard anyway, I think, yeah. because you're not always dealing with the bottom line. You're dealing with a lot of other issues. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that this it itself would not increase costs. I, I, you know, I don't really see any anything here that we would do that would be significantly increased. But you know, to, to assess whether you could save money, uh, it's, it's a little trickier. This is not what we consider an efficiency study. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not what this is. And so, can I ask um, what resources you might have? I mean, I'm I'm never a fan of you know creating another wheel. Um, but, you know, in terms of kind of a logical process, you know, again, it makes sense 
just you know to me that we start with the where are we at part of it um, and it would seem that part of that would be interviewing um, you know to try to flesh out are there you know issues concerns um, people have thoughts on how things might be better um, great starting point is actually <laughs> Mike's kind of in an interesting position I think um, just from conversations you and I've had over the years if you were solely in the in the role of the chief of police I think you would have some things to offer that you would you would like to see as that department head um, work more smoothly um, but now that you're actually you know weeks into this other role I think there's been some other discoveries mm -hmm. um, that you've had yeah um, I mean that might be a good launch pad um, and then that would help direct where we go as well how to expand that I mean we have a treasurer who's you know been engaged for a number of years in different capacities we have uh, you know fire chief again kind of long long-term employees um, that I'm sure we would want to hear from so, so again I'm just wondering I'm sure like every every engagement you do is different and you want to tailor it to the needs of the community but Absolutely, every, every community is different. Um, but we are going to, you know, one of the things that we like to do is after each meeting, we like to meet with the chair and probably you at this point and, and talk about a strategy for what to do at the next meeting. Okay. So they will know what to do when they're posting the notice for the mm -hmm. next meeting. Yep. Um, so I think that we, for your next meeting, we'd probably start off with talking about what issues you're facing, what your concerns are, um, and talking about a work plan going forward. Um, I think we also need to talk a little bit about are we going to limit our discussion to kind of the town manager, town um, administrator act type of role, which may only deal with um, the administration, the executive branch and the administration of that, or are we gonna open it up and look at other issues that would be included in a charter. Um, find that out from you um, based on what your concerns are and how to, how to address them. And then we'll kind of do a step-by-step -step process to get the information that we need to draft whatever you're looking at accomplishing. Um, but yeah, there may be, um, I think department heads are great people to talk to. Um, board chairs are great people to talk to. Um, and But we maybe identify what the most pressing issues are. And then um, I think Mel and I will talk about, there might be some meetings that would be just appropriate for us not to attend, for you to be here, to have these kinds of discussions with these, you know, you might, you might have an evening where you have someone come in every 20 minutes to talk about what their issues are. And mm -hmm. that might be something. So we're gonna put together a plan for you based on you know, what's going, what we're doing going forward. Sure. Uh, Molly and uh, Joyce, if she were here, uh, you've both been on the school committee. Mm -hmm. And I would look at the school committee in this context um, as overseeing a strong administrator in the form of a superintendent. Many public buildings, just like the town has, dozens of employees. And I'm wondering, now that you're a selectman, what's the difference? There was um, great clarity as a school committee member on what your role is. Um, you, what you, your role is. Right. You hire and fire expressed? the superintendent. How was that expressed? Hmm? How was that expressed? Well, I mean, again, it's just it's laid out very clearly. Um, that, so the school committee hires and fires the superintendent, who is basically the CEO of the school district. Um, and you set policy. And would that work as a, uh, for the role of a selectman in handling? I don't know. Is that the way to find out? Well, seriously. Yeah. That came out of the, uh, one of the education reforms. Yeah, 93. Was it? So there was a specific statutory state structure. Statutory. Yes, mm -hmm. state statutory structure mm -hmm. redefining the roles of superintendents and school committees. Okay, so we have 
a, a lady here who has had both roles, and um, would the, something an, analogous to the school, school superintendent work um, under selectmen? Potentially, right? I mean, I think, um, you know, I think about um, the town of Amherst next door. Again, I always want to be careful comparing us to any particular municipality <laughs> people. Is, but it just, they, they happen to have a town manager and council form of government. Um, and when I talk back, back when they had a select board before they went to their town council and did the charter change, um, I was always surprised to find out how, uh, how much lesser a role their select board played than we do here in Hadley. Be and, it was, and it was because, before the change, and it was because the town manager functioned more like the superintendent of, of schools, where again, the, the select board was a sounding board. Um, they engaged in, in higher level policy making. Um, but they didn't get involved in the nitty gritty day to day workings of the town itself. That all fell to the town manager. Um, so again, there's great clarity in that. It, it, it doesn't, you know. Would, would that not be beneficial for the select board's point of view? Well, it depends why people are on select board. If, if people run for select board because they want to you know, play a greater hands-on role, right? So it really depends on. Well, one of the differences, obviously, between the school committee and the town is the, town, the school committee doesn't have any other elected boards, like a board of school athletics, you know, that are elected or, or you know, what I'm hearing elementary is, education. What, what I'm hearing is to contend with. Uh, maybe, <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, is that you're probably not going to be able to change all that. Uh, in Hadley, so you're you're going to have to hire somebody who is not like the superintendent because they don't have that span of control and that jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. It can be somewhat somewhat like it, but you've got to dive down to the details, and we're going to help you do that. Uh, mm -hmm. How how it's different and some of the uh, issues there. Mm -hmm. um, did, does your select board uh, want to come and talk to this committee, or do they pretty much give you and uh, John the uh, or David the? Uh, responsibility there. No, I, would, I would think if they were invited, you know, they they may or may not. I mean, I think initially it's kind of like, we again, we have so many subcommittees, right? This is not the only committee I sit on or any of my colleagues. So uh, a lot of it is a, is a time and bandwidth issue. Um, but I'm positive, um, again, to your point about making sure you, you have some alignment earlier on in the process that if they thought we were going down a particular path, then you know didn't didn't necessarily agree with it. They would they would certainly want to come to the table. But I think it would be appropriate to to engage them at some point. I, I would think from the committee's point of view, it would be a, a prudent thing to do mm -hmm. so we know that we're working together. Or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mal, one of the important things that you may want to know, I saw from your bullet points, you, uh, the important aspects that you should be aware of is that um, six or eight or ten or so months ago, the select board did, uh, one of the committees that they did form uh, is a bylaw committee. It's actually a couple of years ago now, was I think. that long ago? Mm -hmm. I, I'm not on it, so it's one of the few that I'm not on. So yeah. I'm not aware, but you talk a lot about bylaws and how they correlate with your charter and all that stuff. So um, that is, they're, they're working through all of the bylaws. Well, uh, that's good to know, Mike, because uh, that could be you know, problematic if, if, they're, if the bylaws are working in, in one area. Right. We had a situation where we were working for a town with the charter committee, and they didn't even know the uh, bylaw committee submitted a warrant article to a town meeting to, to basically change the, the organization of the town mm -hmm. through a bylaw, and the charter committee didn't know about it. So, uh, it, I think it would be really important to coordinate um, your efforts. Well, yeah, and um, thank you for bringing that up. Um, the bylaw committee, you know, again, was a, appointed by the select board, you know. Um, 
few years ago, you know, and, and they've been meeting and working and, and doing a lot of things, but they haven't really brought anything forward. So they're just now, um, we just found out a couple of meetings ago that they were planning on bringing uh, potentially three uh, articles to town meeting. So they asked for placeholders for that. And I think it, it wasn't really clear, um, or, or I got a sense that it wasn't clear to them that you know, before you go anywhere, you need to come back to the appointing authority, and that's the select board. So we're, we're now pulling them back in because, quite frankly, it's not obvious what they have been working on. So this is a good time to be doing that. Oh, were they talking about spring town meeting that they were bringing? Special town meeting. In, Special town meeting. In, next month. In next month. November. Okay. Yeah. Are they organizational, structural, structural aspects of the town? No. No. Okay. No. But, you know, it, uh, I think the concern, the concern that I had, I'll just, I'll just speak for myself, the concern I had is where they have been spending their time. You know, if, uh, you know, again, without direction, and this is the, the, our fault, this is the fault of the select board. Um, to not be checking in periodically, which is something that we're, we're trying to make sure that we're doing now with all of these subcommittees. Um, it's just making sure that their thinking and our thinking was in alignment in terms of what's a priority, because some of the things that they were talking about, you know, okay. Um, well, that, isn't that something that a strong administrator might have the time to keep track of, where it is? part-time selectmen who meet twice a month just can't? I mean, don't beat yourself up, but I don't see how you can do it. Yes, it's so a challenge. Just as an aside, the it was Carolyn who initiated the bylaw review committee because she had just presided over one in, where was she select board in? Wilbraham. Wilbraham. Mm -hmm. So she had just provided, uh, been involved with one in Wilbraham and was so happy with how it turned out that she was really pushing yeah. to get it created. Mm -hmm. um, but I believe they've been working at a very technical level. Like, do we need to regulate where your horse can be tethered? Yeah. No, we don't. We can <laughs> take that one out. <laughs> well, bylaws are extremely important. You will continue to have yeah. bylaws. The charter does mm -hmm. not obviate mm -hmm. that need. But, um, just you just got to be worried that you're not working at some uh, yeah, cross purposes yeah. in any way. Um, mm -hmm. Any other questions for on the presentation? The next thing on uh, the agenda is mission statement, and in my line of work, we like go bys. We don't create things from whole cloth. But I would propose that if you have samples from other towns, committees, if they have their mission statements. I'd like to mark one up rather than create one, but <laughs> if other people would like to just brainstorm, that's also an option. This is why you're the chair. <laughs> <laughs> I am not the chair. <laughs> I'm a big fan of copying other people's work. And yes, I, I, I concur. Working yeah. around the edges mm -hmm. to make it fit my situation. <laughs> Things like bylaws, plagiarism is not a crime. It's a best practice. It's encouraged. Especially in the public sector. Everything yeah. mm -hmm. is in the open. Like, right. The AG so. has approved it for one town. She'll probably approve it for us. <laughs> exactly. <all. laughs> so yeah, if you guys we'll, have any samples, we'll take I would love a to look. See them. I don't see a lot of mission statements per se because much of what you're doing comes from the charge that the select is that something that's required so that's, in the town it's to be honest i think that you had it i'm not a fan right of in your, it's in in your we have some, some, charge we had some, some, of, the, some, some of the well and i think where that language is coming from is again one of one of the issues we've had to, to john's point you know we're part-time elected officials people have day jobs whatever and in so we try to get as much done as we can, but oversight of all of these subcommittees um, is something that, you know, I think in general has been challenging for us. And we have had uh, in the past some committees that veered off of what we thought their charge was or mission. And so one of the things that we've talked about as a board is we want to do better ourselves and make sure that any committee that's formed, that it's it's very clear in writing what they're supposed to be doing. And I think I think that's where that mission statement comes from. But I, I think in your PowerPoint, 
you articulated it very nicely. The, the, we took it right out of the charge. We pulled that yeah. right out. The bullet so, right so you know, whether you need a mission statement, I don't know. Uh, we don't find a lot of c c committees spending a lot of time talking about mission statements. Okay. So maybe, maybe yeah, this they just use that. Clear. Yeah. Yeah. I would say a couple oh. committees that I've been on, they do talk about value statements. For example, when we're making these decisions, what what values, and, and I think there's definitely some of mm -hmm. that in the in mm -hmm. the charge mm -hmm. that you were given. Mm -hmm. What values are we prioritizing, or prior, might be prior, prioritizing transparency, inclusivity. Um, so sometimes I see that um, where people talk a little bit about what values they want to bring to their decision making. Um, mm -hmm. But I think a lot of that is listed right in the charge. Mm -hmm. And you may wish to just, if you, if you have an additional mission statement, might just want to pull it right from those bullet points in the charge. It's actually one sentence that would be great. <laughs> um, but the town clerk does ask for the mission statement. Then, I mean, the town clerk? The town clerk does ask. That okay. when she, whenever you all appoint a committee, oh. she asks she me. Asks if we have one or she asks what's the person. purpose and the mission of the committee. And so there needs to be something turned over to her. Okay. Just so maybe we can all, you know, mm -hmm. again, go back, take a look at that, and then. Yeah. If anyone has a suggestion, I'm going to pull something out of here, and that'll be my suggestion. Mm -hmm. And other people come to the next meeting if you mm -hmm. want to propose mission statements. That's good to me. Bring them. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll, we'll get one for the town clerk. Thank you. I'll keep everyone happy. You mentioned that one option would be to focus entirely on the role of the town administrator. Is, is that something other towns have done in your experience? Yes. There's different scopes of, mm -hmm. you know, what we meet with, so, um, absolutely. It, it seems to me that where Hadley is right now, to your point, John, mm -hmm. wouldn't it make sense to focus on the town administrator's role? And since we need one and we're about to go out to hire one, have that person focused on and get that solved? Mm -hmm. and then have the administrator, once chosen, help resolve some of these other issues. Is that what? Yeah. yeah I think e even if you do limit it to just the sort of administrative thing, you're really going to have to go through the whole organization right. because, you know, does the administrator appoint individuals in elected boards or do they, uh, uh, do they uh, who's in control of buildings or facilities and who contracts, who negotiates contracts with the unions, and there's a lot of details. So even though you might be just focusing on those administrative details, you really have to look at the whole charter or the whole organization to, to understand it and uh, to make sure you're, you're writing it properly. So, but um, I don't know, I think that sounds like a good uh, approach to me, so uh, okay. we should follow that one. No, would you mind putting the slide back up of the org, like the org chart? Certainly. Yeah, that's what I'd like. Yeah. It's meaning to be, like someone tell us like how the town works. <laughs> yeah, because I, I think. I don't follow it as closely as me. Yeah, same here. It's my favorite. Um, it's so, my favorite. I think if we're looking at the form of government, right, then we're trying to understand sort of the chain of responsibility and a little bit of the processes and how they work. Um, I think you mentioned that it was a sort of a flat organization, you know, sort of a flat chart. Um, so. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I personally might not put it like that because you know it's here. You've yeah. Got, you know, you've got, it looks vertical, but right. these are all independent you yeah. know, sort of bodies across the way. So. Uh, so it's even more horizontal than. The yeah, it, it right. seemed to me more. It's much more decentralized than that appears. If you go what, to the town website and look at the service delivery plan, the there's an additional mission statement okay. that is okay. actually better. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's yeah. still okay. yep. long and lean, but yep. it's a different way. But it's on page four of the service delivery okay. plan on the Slick Board's Great. website under service delivery plan. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Well, I, you know, clearly one of your earlier tasks will be education. And really understanding mm -hmm. what does this mean, mm -hmm. and um, you know, and you're going to be probably given some materials. You'll be interviewing people, and um, I think you know, pretty soon you'll you'll figure it out, and then you can then from there I think uh, 
decide a little bit of your strategies going forward. Would it be appropriate at the special town meeting, which is November, is that what you said? November 14th. November 14th, for someone from this committee to give a little advance Please don't. Perspective? No. Please don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Uh, no, it's bad enough we have to deal with people who are reading zoning articles for the first time on their way in that night. Um, <laughs> it's going to be long. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, I think it, there's been enough airing of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean. At select board meetings. To, to that point, though, I mean, in, in the past, we've done a quick preamble. Um, just to say, hey, some things that are going on. I don't think it needs to be. Could flag it. Yeah, I mean, it can be mm -hmm. quick. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard that people appreciated that, and, and now we're, we've been back to the room just right into the consent agenda and all of that stuff. So, something, and if it's not the fall, maybe it's, maybe mm -hmm. it's the annual town meeting, yeah. I don't know. But I mean, you can, the, the public forum right. that is usually a few days before or the night before sometimes, um, and the special town meeting always have an accompanied slide, a PowerPoint presentation that Jennifer puts together. You don't need to bring anyone in to necessarily talk about anything or field questions, which is what Bill is talking about, because it is going to be a long meeting. Mm -hmm. But if you just put a bullet point up that, you know, goings on of the town, you could even let it sit up there as people file in so it's what people are looking at when they come in so they're aware that this is these are the things that are going on right now something's quick and simple i think um, more to the point that we don't have enough clarity of yeah. what we're doing yeah yeah to mm -hmm. be able to say anything about it mm -hmm. right well, so could, will we get an electronic copy of that slide yes i'll make sure to send along to you this whole presentation thank you well, I think sometimes it's equally important to tell people what you're not doing, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> because you're not raising taxes. You know, I, I've <laughs> right. had people right. say "form of government," and then somebody turned around and said, "She, she's trying to get rid of open town meeting." Huh. I'm like, no, she's not. You know, um, so you know, maybe just a little bit. You have a town meeting that, like, the town goes to. So you know, the same 50 people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Something to strive for. I yeah. mean, I don't go, so I'm going to work. I'm motivating myself. Well, the same 101 <laughs> people, because that's <laughs> yeah. a four. Yeah. yeah, okay, 101. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm not sure people even know that that's where decisions are made. People just don't look okay. into Imagine these things. the general public doesn't know the different forms of government and that, oh, yeah. you know, we have this particular, because of the size of our population. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I so didn't know that. I just, first heard. I just learned that. <laughs> yeah. So that's good information. Maybe for you know, in the interest of transparency, yeah. you know that probably is open to town meeting format, and that was that's staying the same. Like just nip yeah. that right in the bud, right? You know, by law, right? Um, that sort of I think because I think transparency from the get go, even if it's just you know they've had their first meeting, mm -hmm. and they have a lot of work to do. So <laughs> sometimes once you get going, um, you might assign someone to give an update to the local newspapers and say what's going on. Um, mm -hmm. We've had some who have done Facebook pages and posted their meetings. Um, and you can talk amongst yourself about what your town does with respect to turning off comments and things like that. But it's another <laughs> place It's another place to like post Sorry. information. You don't have to. But, you know, it's... Um, kind of you just mute the frequent complainers. The, the, the whole I, thing I gets will, much I better. I will tell you that the Gazette reporter <laughs> will probably watch this at work tomorrow. Yeah, great. He's pretty good about picking mm -hmm. up on all And mm -hmm. some of them go through and, and write up an article themselves based on it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, mm -hmm. anything you can do to keep people informed. Right. Right. So, yeah. I have a question. I, I heard, you know, you didn't want to be sort of compared to Amherst. I understand that. Are there any communities that you do want that typically come up all the time and say, well, let's, let's look at how so-and-so does it, or is there any uh, uh, peers like that that, that are very I, I obvious? Think you'd, I think you'd be hard-pressed to find a community that looks anything like right. Hadley. Because of your rural, rural nature. There's the just, rural just I've just spent down the 10 years trying to, trying to write budgets for public safety in this community, and it's, it's next to impossible just because of the 
the differences in our community and all others. Or the mm -hmm. tiny little population of people that live here, farmland north and south of Route 9, and then basically West Springfield running up the middle. Of it. Yeah. It's just, it's yeah. just really, really and hard. And the universities right up the middle. Five mm -hmm. colleges yeah. spread, you know, sprinkled around half of UMass is in Hadley. Mm -hmm. It's just really, really, really hard to find anything that looks like this town. Okay. Really unique. Well, that's good to know because, you know, some, in some place we go, we go, well, just make sure we know what that town's doing because we like to stay in the same, <laughs> or we don't want to be anything like this. Well, and I, and I think the comparatives tend to come up more in the context of the, the budget, right, than anything else. So oftentimes you'll hear people say, well, we're not Amherst and we're not Northampton. Why are they trying to do that? And they're thinking about it in the context of population and, and, and budget. Right, that, that these other municipalities have so many more layers to their staffing structure, right? So. Well, we will find communities that have a charter that are your size. Okay. And, uh, you know, maybe not a lot, but uh, we'll find uh, some. And then we'll use, though, we like to use things. I think somebody said, if the Attorney General, or in this case, yeah. this legislature <laughs> approves something, well, then we know mm -hmm. that's good language. And so we, we use existing charters a lot. It's a very interesting culture to speak to Mike's uh, discovery that there's a there, there's a agricultural Hadley on the south and the north and, and West Springfield in the middle, and and that's literally true. I mean, it's very difficult to get things uh, to, to to get those two concepts or, or, or to come together on something. I would say one other thing that we're going to look into a little bit and would love your input on is um, we're going to be really interested in hearing like what is your participation like at town meeting? Um, how many people come? What is the most that come and the fewest that come? What are your elections like? Um, how many people participate in those elections? Are they, do people run unopposed? Um, or is, yes. is there competitive? <laughs> What is your volunteerism like mm -hmm. here? Right. Um, are you able to fill appointed and elected positions? <coughs> so um, that's very unique information to Hadley that we'll really, um, you know, we'll try to get some information on, but you can also let us know your experiences. The town clerk collects that. Mm -hmm. So she yeah. would have the statistics on who voted, how many came to town meeting. Good from year to year, and if there's a spike, we can probably fill in Why? by pointing. <laughs> Fire <laughs> truck. That Fire was truck. Article 28 of the uh, <laughs> uh, tiny, house yeah. tiny houses. Tiny houses. Tiny houses. Yeah. 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 Boards and yeah. doings on the town website, yeah. Town clerk's page, boards and doings. Right. And in the annual report, it'll have you, it'll have listed how many people participate in each, elect, each election and who voted. You can see it all broken out in the town reports. Going back to at least 2007, I think, online. That's good. Thank you. Nice. And, and another thing, we're, I mean, we'll be interested in here, what are your hot button issues? What are the issues that brings everyone to town meeting? Um, you know, what are, sometimes those are the issues that are most pressing to be fixed or solved in the town. Um, so. Occasionally, budget, often zoning articles. Yeah, yeah. zoning so problems. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Which is why the select board very thoughtfully places the zoning articles at the end of the agenda, so <laughs> people will stay. Or <laughs> <laughs> the right people will stay. <laughs> you just don't want anyone to do a quorum call at 9:30. <laughs> That's happened before. Yep. Yes. Last item on the agenda is the meeting schedule. They suggested twice a month. Which it's really up to you. We, that's typically what we see is, uh, you know, a, a consistent effort um, and one that's predictable, um, yeah. not only for you folks in your schedule, but also the public. Mm -hmm. Are Thursdays good for people <laughs> since we're here on a Thursday? Yeah, so uh, the third Thursday of every month we have housing and economic development, which both Bill and I are mm -hmm. on, and that's at 6 o'clock. Um, and if, depending if people want to meet in person or on Zoom, I mean, we 
we could do a five o'clock, but it would be limited to an hour, yeah. or we would have to do it on a different, not the third, you know. Yeah. Well, and second and fourth. Second and fourth second we could do. Just right off Thursdays for, well, for no, the month. Sec second and fourth Thursdays. Right. Yeah. That, I mean, yeah. I'm very flexible, so. Yeah. This is skip, what skip, the, skip, this skip. is the second Thursday. Is it? Second and fourth. Yeah, All in good. favor. Same, the same time, same place. Is five o'clock good for everyone? Yes. Yes. After well, end of January it won't be for me because my uh, spring semester teaching schedule is uh, Thursday still five. But that said, I teach at UMass, so you know I could five be here thirty. <laughs> well, or I, six? yeah. Six. Don't six want to get a speeding six. ticket. Yeah, six. Well, probably. you could. <laughs> Start it, you no. keep it at yeah. 5 30. Yeah, Until and then I'll just January. Yeah, yeah, okay. till, yeah, yeah, yeah. See how yeah. it goes. Yeah, and the 14th, y'all are all busy of November. That's the meeting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we'll take that week off. Yeah. So what is the date? Did you just run down the date of the, it's the, good the fourth, first day? Um, I don't, oh, I have a phone. Yes, <laughs> I silenced it and forgot about it. Special meeting is the 14th. Yep, okay. Of course, we're going to need to know what. Joyce is so <laughs> the 24th of October would be the next meeting. Mm -hmm. And if we stay at 2nd and 4th, that would be the 14th and the 28th of November. 28th, is that Thanksgiving? That's Thanksgiving. That's Thanksgiving. And the so 14th is town meeting. Oh, so okay. November's bad for 2nd and 4th. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we may do, do something different on Wednesdays? <laughs> Not the 1st and 3rd. We could do the second and the fourth. Yeah, we could do the second, second and fourth, fourth Wednesday. on Wednesdays. Anyone? Thirteenth, second. So it's the twelfth and the twenty-sixth in November. Mm -hmm. We do have another committee we meet with on Wednesdays. Okay. However, um, it may. If I'm not sure if you're going to be virtual or um, in person. On you know, there may be times we can come virtually where we could. Yeah. Drive and get here. Do you something. have hybrid meetings? We do hybrid. Sometimes well, it's ending, isn't it? We can do hybrid. Um, I mean, virtual are actually the easiest for. I mean, just because we can record them and we can, right? Um, I mean, we could always pivot to an in-person or a hybrid meeting as needed. But how would people feel about? as a general rule doing? Uh, planning Board has been all, uh, all virtual since the pandemic, and we find that it's perfect for something like that. Um, right. And uh, I, I'm, a big, I'm a big fan. Um, That's something that we're, we're very comfortable with. You, you would have to sort of or arrange it. We couldn't sure. we could have yeah. run that, that part of the technology. And, and there may be times you want to be in person if you're at mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. people in. So if we're doing like a or, check in or. Yeah. yeah. Um, but could we set the next meeting and then set the schedule then when Joyce is here and yeah. David is here? Mm -hmm. Right, so you don't want to lock in too much mm -hmm. yep. with two people missing. Mm -hmm. So, you want to do the Wednesday, <laughs> two weeks from now? Is it the 23rd? At no, the stuff board is meeting that night. Oh, Pot potentially. That's a, sorry. Yeah, that's an extra meeting we scheduled right. just because of it. Let's go with the Thursday, just no. for next Thursday week. 24th. Mm -hmm. 24th and 5. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. In person for now. Yeah. And hopefully Joyce will be here, <laughs> and we can set something going forward. Better hope she's here. I'll break the news to her about her <laughs> chair. And will that be a hybrid meeting or a virtual? Um, That'll be virtual, right? Oh, the one in two weeks. Or yeah, or no? Do you want to do? I I don't care. What what is people's preference? Yeah, I work from home, so I'm excited to leave the house from time to time, but I'm also <laughs> fine at home because I do it all the time. Thoughts? I like in person meetings. In person. I'm old fashioned. Mm -hmm. I like in person. Uh, Will the meeting be here? We're going to have to see if it's available. I, yeah, I have to check and see if it's available. I'll have to check and see if it's available, so that'll come out in an email later. Okay. Okay. Good. 
So um, with hybrid, in case someone can't make it. Yeah, I'd like to do hybrid. I, yeah. As the alternate, I'm not quite sure what my role is. I'd like to stay in touch, but uh, at the same time, if I'm not voting on something, it'd be yeah. easier to be at home. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, as I said, plan I'm so used to doing it with the planning board. It's just so effect effective for yeah, historical putting something on all in virtual too. that can... Um, it's so much more effective to put something up on the screen that the viewing public can follow mm -hmm. than to pass or than to be editing stuff on, on the table and Agreed. passing it around. So it will be a hybrid meeting then. Mm -hmm. So this will be one question. So as alternate, am I going to make quorum if we don't have Okay. Can we just keep you on call on yeah, Well, that's days? the thing. I, you know, it, if, it, it, if it's a matter of staying in touch with what's going on and coming in when I'm needed to make quorum, that's that's one thing. If it's a matter of just sitting yeah. here, I mean, I'm happy to sit here and talk, but um, <laughs> at, at some point, uh, I just like to have a little clarity. Yeah. Well, I won't get it for me because I don't know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that would be my expectation of an alternate. That's typically how, you know, they stay informed. You don't vote. Yeah. When, but if, you know, we need quorum, then. We really don't have any other boards that are, that have alternates. Maybe one or two. We did on the, um, was it the Housing Production Plan? And ambulance. Committee? And ambulance. Who? Ambulance. ambulance. Oh, an ambulance. ambulance. That's right. The ambulance. Uh, we we have a, an alternate yeah. as well. Yeah. Okay. If I may, yeah, in I our experience, all alternates have also yeah. been really great at participating in discussions. Right. So um, it's not you know so don't get feel like you have to hold back if okay. you're not actually stepping up on that day. We we find that alternates are in, incredible incredible idea generators and and really bring a lot of different viewpoints. So we'd love to hear from you. Still you're still not on that day. Okay. Mm -hmm. All are welcome. So. <laughs> All right. I'll be your designated general public on day. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the public is here today. <laughs> so uh, that's all that's on the agenda that I was given. So does anyone have anything else? Do we have to do like move to adjourn or can you, or do we just go? Yeah, make a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right.